Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another freezer meal video. So several weeks ago, I posted a ground beef freezer meal video and I loved filming that. And so I thought I would post a freezer meal video featuring chicken breast. And so today I'm going to make five different freezer meals featuring boneless, skinless chicken breast for $60 or less. Now this is gonna depend on how cheap you can find your chicken breast for in your area and what pantry staples that you have on hand. But if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm a full-time working mom and I have two kids who are 10 and seven. And on this channel, I like to do a lot of cooking and home and food content. So if you're new, I would love for you to subscribe. So today we are going to be making a slow cooker cream cheese crack chicken chili. Long name, delicious recipe. I'm also going to be making a slow simmered meat ragu, which has both sausage and chicken in it. Some chicken Alfredo broccoli shells, a freezer chicken cordon bleu, and then also some homemade chicken pot pie. So let me show you first all of the groceries that I have gathered up to make these recipes. I'm also going to be showing you the completed recipes in this video because I think that's really important for you guys to know whether or not we like them, uh, you know, what we thought of the recipes and how they turned out. And so you can see that before you decide whether or not you are going to make it for yourself. So let's get into it. All right, so here are all of the ingredients that I'm going to need for my chicken freezer meals. So I have two large packages of chicken breasts that I got at Walmart. I probably won't need all of these, but I went ahead and got two. Uh, this is the best price for chicken breasts usually in my area is $1.99 a pound at Walmart, so I grabbed that. Um, I also have some mixed vegetables for the chicken pot pie, some cream cheese, some Parmesan cheese, shredded mozzarella, and shredded cheddar. Some pie crust for the chicken pot pie, um, two onions that I'll chop up and use in the recipes, some broccoli for the chicken broccoli alfredo shells, some jumbo shells, two jars of alfredo. Um, some of the recipes call for chicken broth, but I usually keep this chicken bouillon on hand and then I just mix it with hot water for chicken broth. Some spices, so cumin, onion powder, chili powder. Uh, oregano and some poultry seasoning and then for the crack uh, chicken chili I have black beans whole kernel corn and uh, mild rotel I have some breadcrumbs for the chicken cordon bleu panko and regular uh, some Dijon mustard hot sauce uh, for the marinara sauce I have tomato basil sauce some Italian diced tomatoes some regular tomato sauce and some pesto um, one red pepper, turkey pepperoni, some Italian sausage, some eggs. Uh, the cracked chicken soup recipe calls for cooked bacon. I have some in my refrigerator already, so I might just use this. I also have some extra bacon if I need that. And then for the chicken cordon bleu, um, Swiss cheese, and sliced ham. So let's get started on these chicken freezer meals. All right, so most of the recipes in this video call for raw chicken breast, but there were a couple that called for cooked cubed chicken breast. And so I'm just going to get these prepped up really quick. I have some chicken breasts here that I am sauteing in olive oil with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And I'm not going to saute these cooking them through. You can see they're rather thick chicken breasts, but what I will do is brown them on either side. And then I like to add a little bit of chicken broth, or you could add a little bit of water. Um, to cook them through the rest of the way. So, well, actually I'm adding water, not chicken broth. <laughs> and then I'll just put the lid on and simmer these slowly until they are cooked through. If I would have had more time, um, I probably would have liked to cook these in the crock pot be because they would have been a little bit more tender, but you could do it either way. Or if you wanted to order a, or not order, but buy a rotisserie chicken, you can definitely do that as well. So once the chicken breasts were cooked up, I'm just going to cube those up and get them into a large measuring cup to make sure that I have enough for all of my recipes. Make sure that you season the meat well because this will be going in your freezer meal dishes and you don't want them to be bland. Okay. 
Okay, so the first recipe that I'm going to share with you is this slow cooker cream cheese cracked chicken chili. Yes, it is a long name, but it is a delicious recipe. This was our favorite out of all of these that I made. This is from plainchicken.com, so I will link all of these recipes down below if you guys want to try them out. Um, so what you'll need for this is some chicken broth. Like I said, I do freeze chicken broth, but I don't always have the time to thaw it out, um, and I don't always plan ahead properly. And so in this case, I'm just using some of the Knorr chicken broth um, or chicken bouillon that I keep on hand, and I just mixed up one cup of that. So I labeled my Ziploc bag, and I have these bag holders. I've talked about them before in freezer meal videos, and I get them on Amazon. They are fantastic and super inexpensive. I will link them down below. So I added two chicken breasts to my bag along with one can of corn, one can of black beans, and one can of Rotel. Um, I went ahead and added the chicken broth along with some chopped and cooked bacon. So if you didn't want to cook your own bacon, I think you could definitely add uh, bacon bits to this and it would taste you know, just, just as good. Um, since I happen to have this leftover bacon in the refrigerator, it was convenient for me just to chop it up so that I could get it used up. Next, you'll add your seasonings. So this calls for a one ounce packet of Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning, but I always have the large container of it that I get at Costco. So I just added the equivalent. It will say on the jar what the equivalent of that is. It also calls for one teaspoon of cumin, one tablespoon of chili powder, uh, one teaspoon of onion powder, and then an eight ounce packet of cream cheese. So the closest thing I can tell you that this tastes like is like a chicken queso, and it is delicious. Um, when you cook it up in the slow cooker, you kind of have to whisk it together a little bit, but it makes a nice creamy texture, and it's really good. Um, we liked it with like cheese and green onions on top. You could put sour cream, crushed up chips, cilantro, whatever you like, but I definitely would recommend this recipe and it is great as a freezer meal. Okay, so the next recipe I'm showing you is a slow simmered meat ragu that has chicken in it. Uh, this recipe is from tasteofhome.com and I like this because not only did it have chicken in it, but it also had Italian sausage. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get my veggies chopped up for this. Now this recipe, you're essentially combining everything in a large um, freezer bag and then freezing it. And then when you wanna use it, you just dump everything into the slow cooker, simmer it all day, and then serve it up with pasta. Okay, so this recipe calls for one red bell pepper chopped up and one onion chopped up. It also calls for um, some chopped mushrooms, but most of us here don't like those, and so I went ahead and left those out. The nice thing about this recipe is that you don't even have to saute the veggies because it's obviously all going to cook in the slow cooker, so you can just put them in as is. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my bag and start layering in the ingredients. Um, I always just like to put in the um, like the chopped or the dry ingredients first. That way when I pour the liquid ingredients over into the bag, it's easier to mix everything up. So once I get the vegetables in there, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my other ingredients. So it calls for one jar of tomato basil marinara. I'm just using uh, one of the Walmart brands of tomato sauce and I just like to put a little bit of water in there shake it up and pour out the extra so I don't waste any. Um, it also calls for a can of Italian flavored diced tomatoes, which I added, and then one can or eight ounces of tomato sauce. Um, I think the other unique thing about this recipe is it calls for some pesto, which gives it a really great flavor. So I added that as well. Um, and then next I added in my chicken breast. So I just added two um, sort of medium sized chicken breasts and then I'm chopping up my pepperoni. So it calls for one half cup of chopped pepperoni. I am using uh, turkey pepperoni, but you could use regular if you wanted. I tend to like to use the turkey pepperoni because it has less grease. Um, next, I'm gonna add some oregano, so one teaspoon of dried oregano, and then it also calls for about half a teaspoon of hot sauce, so I just use Tabasco. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so next I'm going to put in some Italian sausage. So I just kind of cut this into large chunks and I'm putting it into the bag. Obviously these will cook in the sauce as it slow cooks all day. So I went ahead and sealed this up and then I'm just going to give it a good shake, which <laughs> honestly this always makes me nervous that the bag is gonna come busting open, but I did wanna make sure I mixed everything together. So to cook this, you can just put it in the slow cooker for eight hours on low. And I just served this over some pasta with some broccoli and some Parmesan cheese on top. I think if I made this again, I would use chicken thighs instead of chicken breasts, but it was really good. Okay, so the next recipe I'm gonna show you is some chicken broccoli Alfredo shells. This was also another favorite of ours of these five meals that I made. So I'm going to start out by boiling my shells. These are just large um, shells. I get the Barilla brand, I find them at Walmart. And you just wanna boil these until they are uh, mostly tender. Do not overcook them because you're going to stuff these and put them in the freezer. And then you're gonna end up baking them, obviously when you wanna eat them, and so just, Make sure that you don't overcook them, otherwise they will get super gummy and fall apart in your dish. So once these were cooked, I'm just going to remove them to a tray that I have lined with foil with a little bit of cooking spray. The reason I do this is so that I can put them in a single layer and they don't stick together. Um, that way they can cool off before I go ahead and stuff them with my meat mixture. Okay, so to assemble the shells, I'm gonna put two cups of cooked chicken in a bowl along with two cups of cooked broccoli. I just steamed some fresh broccoli in the microwave. And then I added one jar of Alfredo sauce along with some shredded cheddar cheese. Now the original recipe only called for one jar of Alfredo sauce for the whole dish, but I was afraid it was gonna be dry if I didn't use more. And so I ended up using two jars of Alfredo. Um, so I would definitely recommend that if you're going to make this dish because it was um, extra creamy when we baked it up. And I think without that, it would have been dry. Um, so I also added some Parmesan cheese to the mixture and next I'm going to assemble my shells. So I'm using one of these Glad freezer containers. Um, you just have to be careful with these because you can, I think you can only use them up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit since they're not like a metal pan, um, but I do like using them. They clean up really well. So what I did was just spread a little bit of Alfredo sauce in the bottom so the shells wouldn't stick. And then I'm just using a large um, tablespoon to stuff the shells with the chicken and broccoli mixture and putting those in the pan. Uh, we made these the other night and they were so so, so good. I was actually really impressed with how flavorful they were. Both my kids liked them. Um, Adam really liked them. I think that it's just one of those meals that has things that everyone likes, like everyone in this house likes chicken and broccoli and cheese. Um, and just to have those in a stuffed pasta shell was really unique. So I'm just going to keep assembling these and then I will top them with a little bit more sauce before I get them in the freezer. All right, so this is what the dish looks like assembled. I just topped it with more Alfredo sauce and a little bit more shredded cheese. When you cook this, you'll want to thaw it in the, in the refrigerator, excuse me, or partially thaw it. Then you can cook it covered at 350 until it is nice and bubbly. And then at the end, I took the foil off just so it, the cheese could brown up a little bit. But seriously would recommend this recipe. It was so good. Okay, so the next chicken freezer meal I'm sharing is a chicken cordon bleu. I was super excited to make this because I feel like I haven't made it in so long and I love chicken cordon bleu. So I just have some of my raw chicken breasts here that I uh, filleted sort of horizontally so that I could spread them open kind of like you spread open a book and then stuff the ham and the cheese inside. So I just have four kind of rather large chicken breasts here. You could prep as many of these as you wanted. And I'm layering the deli ham inside along with about a piece and a half to two pieces of the Swiss cheese. So for this chicken, you'll actually um, bread it and then freeze it. And then when you bake it, um, I um, 
poured some melted butter on it before I baked it and it turned out crispy and delicious. So in this bowl, I just have some egg uh, whipped up with a little bit of half and half and some Dijon mustard that will help our breadcrumbs stick to uh, the chicken. So in it with my breadcrumbs, I'm just adding some um, seasoned salt and some flour and then I'll go ahead and mix that up and that is what will uh, bread our chicken. So I am using a mixture of panko and regular breadcrumbs which is what the recipe called for. I think you could probably use either panko or regular breadcrumbs and it would be fine. So to assemble these I'm just going to uh, place the chicken into the egg wash and then roll it into the breadcrumb mixture and place them into a freezer pan. Um, I was actually a little bit, I w like, I, I knew this recipe was going to be good, but I was a little bit hesitant because I didn't know if it would crisp up in the oven. And I think the tip of melting some butter and drizzling it over um, the chicken before baking it is definitely one that you should use. The original recipe didn't call for that, but anytime I want to crisp something up in the oven, I always do that. Either spray it with cooking spray or... Um, with you know with melted butter I think also you could do these in the air fryer and they would be good and it's nice because you don't have to mess around with like you know toothpicks or anything like that so here's what's it, what it looks like baked up I went ahead and sliced it up so you guys can see the inside this was definitely a keeper I will be making this recipe again it was a crowd pleaser I just served this with a simple salad on this side Okay, so last but not least, I'm showing you a really good recipe for chicken pot pie. The whole family loved this. I made enough to make it several times. Um, and one weekend we had it like at least three times <laughs> that weekend and it was really, really good. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is dice up a yellow onion. Um, I'll go ahead and saute this in some butter and that is what we will use to start making our roux mixture to thicken um, the gravy that goes in with the chicken pot pie. So as soon as I'm done chopping up this onion, I'm just going to get it into a pot with some olive oil and butter to saute. <music> Okay, so once the onions are tender, I went ahead and added the flour, and then I'm going to add some poultry seasoning. And you just need to cook this for a little bit. Make sure that you don't burn it, but it is nice to kind of cook some of the raw flavor out of the flour. Next, I am adding some chicken broth and then also some milk. So essentially, you're, you're kind of making your own cream of chicken soup um, in a way here because you're using both milk and chicken broth but if you're intimidated by making chicken pot pie don't be because it's super easy especially when you do it like I did and use the pre-made pie crust there's really no way that you can screw it up so um, if I didn't mention before this recipe is also from Taste of Home um, I love their website and I get their magazine also and I always find that they have such great recipes so after the uh, gravy mixture is thickened you can go ahead and add the rest of your ingredients so I'm just seasoning it with a little bit of salt and pepper and next Next, I will add um, two cups, or I'm sorry, three cups of cubed cooked chicken, and then you can add some mixed vegetables. So I'm just using frozen mixed vegetables. If you didn't have that on hand and wanted to use canned, um, I think that might work. You might just want to be careful not to get them too mushy in the sauce. Um, you can also add some chopped cooked potatoes. That would be really good in here. I seem to remember having pot pie when I was a kid with cooked potatoes, and I always really liked that. So to make these, I'm gonna use some smaller loaf pans. I got these at Walmart in a three pack. I like making them like this because if there's some night that I just wanna make one for me or Adam, or you know, one for me and Adam, or one for the kids or something like that, I'm not you know cooking a huge batch of chicken pot pie and, and wasting it. So I'm just splitting this into the containers and next I will add my crust to the top. So like I said, I'm just using uh, pre-made pie crust for this. It is um, just the, well I, well, I can't remember if I got the Walmart brand or the Pillsbury brand. You guys would have saw it in the grocery haul. Um, but basically you just kind of fit it over the top of the pan. You could either, you know, you could use a pie plate too if you wanted to. And then I'm just cutting a couple of slits in the top so that the steam can come out and then brushing it with egg wash. And then that's it. Basically you just pop these in the freezer as is. When you want to cook them, 
Um, I would take them out and probably thaw them partially. Um, you could probably put them in the oven totally frozen, but you'd want to cook it at a lower temperature for longer so that the filling has time to heat up and the crust doesn't burn. Um, but these were really good and simple. I would definitely recommend this recipe. Um, this is probably how I will be making chicken pot pie from now on. So you can see here that it is nice and creamy on the inside. I just did a test one for you in a ramekin <laughs> to make sure it was good. Um, but yeah, these did turn out really good. I just chopped it or topped it with some fresh herbs. Okay, so here are all of my chicken breast freezer meals completed. I have two uh, chicken pot pies here. Again, I decided to split these out into smaller containers um, just to make sure that I didn't cook a big one and waste them. So I'll cover these up with foil and get them in the freezer. I have my slow cooker crack chicken chili. Again, this is my favorite recipe out of all of them. So definitely make sure that you try that. Here is the slow cooker chicken ragu. So both of these, what I'll do when I'm ready to make them is just run the bag under some hot water, just enough to kind of loosen the food inside from the bag pop it in the slow cooker and cook it on low all day and it will be ready to go. Uh, in this container, I have my chicken broccoli Alfredo shells. These are gonna be a huge hit with my kids. They are delicious. And then my chicken cordon bleu. So for this one, I'll just thaw, bake it up 400 for 50 to 55 minutes. So I'm very excited to have all of these meals in my freezer. Uh, if you guys have been watching my channel, you know that swim season has started. And so I am definitely looking for quick weeknight meals. So this will help us out a lot. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching this video and thanks so much for your support here on my YouTube channel. I love sharing these freezer meal videos with you and like I said, I'm so excited to have these in my freezer ready to go for the upcoming weeks. If you guys are planning on trying any of these, let me know which ones you're planning on trying. And if you have any requests for freezer meal videos going forward, be sure to let me know that as well. I will see you in my next video. Bye.